Okay, gentlemen, gentle ladies, um, I'm going to start with my presentation. Um, this is going to be a nice story because um, the original title of this presentation was different. I'll explain you later why. But that doesn't mean we're, gonna st we, we're going to tell a nice story about it. So I enjoy you. The, the I hope you enjoy this presentation, and let's continue. Like I said, uh, first of all, about it's about how implementing services in a large telecom, how it, what went good, how we continued. So we're talking about the partners, the transformation, what is learned, and the ideal roles, and most important. Like I said, it should be a, a story here about two people. Two guys who met in the begin in the early this year and did something together. Only unfortunately, on Friday, we discovered that one of them was not allowed to speak. Yes, if you know why, I'm not going into the details, but it's not that he, he hates me or whatever. He's even in the room here, so it's okay. But so, um, who am I? My name is Frank Weins. I'm. Uh, to put it bluntly, I'm, uh, I like open source software. I'm in the business for 20 years with Linux. Last year I s uh, went to, uh, to OpenStack I, because I like the idea about when you work together you can create something unbelievable. And also, uh, the last years I, when I'm in the, in the sales engineering side of the business, I think if you want to sell something, it's about teaching. It's about educating your customer how he can use your products in the right way, how he can create value with the things that you deliver. Like I said, it's about explaining. It's, done, it's not about preaching what's good or what's right. Decide together with it. With it. But also, from a customer side, especially what I would call in this open stack world, you have to be open to learn. If you're able to learn, also, be open it, be critical, challenge it, give feedback to, to your, uh, to your um, uh, suppliers, but also be a teacher in your organization. I can honestly tell you this, the, the implementations we did at Mirantis with OpenStack that were successful were the ones where we talked with the customer, we went to, together to implement the project, where we created together value. I'll give you another example. I, two weeks ago, no, two months ago, I received an RFP from an insurance company, 40 pages or something, and everything in that RFP was impossible almost. Because somebody had read a book about OpenStack and they said, I want 10,000 10, virtual machines running on SDN with software defined storage in one cloud. That was a summary of it. I said, right, just do it but not with me. When I want to do something, when I want to implement something, like I said, I've been in the Linux business, I've been in the OpenStack business, and normally the, the model in the, open stack, in the open source world, it's not licensing, it's subscriptions. And subscriptions has to be renewed every year. So if you create something that's not renewable after a year, you're stuck. So that's my, my, my mission. So, like I said, I work for Mirantis. My mission is to build automated uh, clouds, mission critical. Uh, and we are open to feedback. Because OpenStack, as everybody knows, is a rolling thing going on. And it's not one product that you ship in a box. Oh. Now, a large telecom, which I can't name. Um, so in, this, in October, they decided they want to implement uh, OpenStack in the data center. And because they didn't have the in-house experience, they s decided to go with a partner. And they selected Mirantis for the anticipation study. Like I said, this is a study what we did together. This is the journey to grow. Like I said, also what you see with, with OpenStack, it's what I'd call a disruptive uh, software, it's a disrupted way. Because once wh what's disruptive about OpenStack is, in the, the traditional data centers, you have networking, you have storage, you have server, you got operators. With OpenStack, you combine it to one situation. And not everybody loves that at the same time. 
You have to make sure, like I said, also when you want to implement OpenStack inside your organization, that you align also those organizations, because otherwise it ain't be a success. So what was the idea about the transformation? Cloud infrastructures, uh, infrastructure uh, as a service based on OpenStack, software architecture designed for the cloud, the tooling and automation. The objective was to reduce the time to market in the life cycle. That's not what I would call big science, but that's a fact. Okay. <coughs> At the moment, most of the customers, they have virtualization inside. But virtualization is what I would call a deluxe version of infrastructure. It's not an automating thing. So if you... Good afternoon, welcome. Close the door. And also what you see in, in uh, traditional infrastructure at the moment is a completely separation between, I would call the hardware, the service, between test, acceptance and production. If, if you want to build a new agile infrastructure, one of the things is indeed is to make sure that you can deliver self-service. And with self-service, I mean not to the end customer, but internally to your project, to the people. That when they need something, it's filled in. This is like in the real world, you know? If now you want to book a travel, what you do? You go to a website, you book the travel. You don't need the travel agency, the people sitting there like this, slowing down the process. So also, please use that self-service as one of the key features for new agile infrastructure. That also implements what I would say a more... Uh, Responsible, uh, responsibility about security, but networking, because it's also done automatically. The nice thing is, if you impl implement OpenStack clouds, or clouds in general, in the right way, there's no difference anymore between the infrastructure for test environments and production environments. So the risk by moving from test acceptance to production is much less than you go in a uh, the traditional environment. Also, uh, with the new application designs, um, sometimes they call it what I would call the cattle and the pets. Anybody heard about that? Cattle, pets? Some people? It's one of the terms invented by uh, Tim Bell, I think, from CERN. With a pet, I mean a virtual machine or a machine that needs to be kept alive. Whatever happens, it must be kept alive, you know? In the early days, you had non-stop tandem computers, make sure that everything was up and running, all thing for that only virtual machine. Now, when you design with new applications, cloud applications, it's the size, the number of virtual machines, which will create a high availability. Why is everybody opening my doors? <laughs> is this a movie? <laughs> okay, we continue. Like I said, oh, nice. Uh, it's like if so. In, if you design new infrastructures, make sure that you scale horizont, uh, in a horizontal way. Also, what I would say with OpenStack is it's better to have 500 virtual machines where 10 percent can die than five where only one can die. So that's that's the thing. Also, nice thing about this is one of the nice things about OpenStack, and that's why I believe in OpenStack. It's the open APIs. And the nice thing is with OpenStack, because it's now really what I would call, I consider it myself a standard in the industry at the moment, is that you can deliver APIs, programming interfaces to your internal customers, but also to your partners. That you, when they deliver software, when they deliver applications to you, that you are able to say, and gentlemen, we are using those APIs from OpenStack the high sales, the you know, whatever, but at least you can say to them, this is the way you have to de 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 develop and deliver your software to. <coughs> also, the nice thing, if you go about virtualization, and when you talk about it, it's in the early days of computers and servers, you want to consol consolidate as much as servers as possible. Don't do it. Try even to get more modular instances, more uh, things than bi creating big monsters. 
also, one of the things with OpenStack is, and we, we did it with some other customers too, is, gentlemen, you want to deliver as fast as possible. And because you have, indeed, what I would call no separation anymore between the test, acceptance, and production environment, it's very easier to deploy things in production. Also, you can automate and rule, make rules that, you, for example, when you deploy it in production, you don't have to deploy it in production everything at the same time. You can create, for example, for this, uh, this customers or this internal project, we, we're going to keep the old version, but for 5% of the users, we, we're going to use the new version. And if everything works all right, we're going to grow the, the instance. That's the way how you deploy in a, in a new way. <coughs> like I said, in, um, uh, when you want to implement, implement those, those things, you really need also to understand that also internally the organization has to transform. You have to indeed uh, get those integrated teams, you have to no more silos, but you have to keep what I would say from even from a smaller project, you have to make it a complete entity. Uh, like I was talking about, automation of tasks, testing, development, expose what is produced as a service. Also, one of the things that you see in, in the OpenStack world is when we speak as a service. Everything is going to be as a service. What does it mean is, with traditional applications, you have an application and it requires some things, some kind of networking settings, a database, what I would call the add-ons, for to, to deploy and deliver that application. Now what you see in OpenStack environments, what you see in OpenStack environments is that those add-ons will be more and more delivered as a service. Like I'm doing a door as a service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's really the thing. You've got applications, I mean users coming in, they need something, they open the door, they take it, and afterwards, with a good OpenStack environment, you also clean up the leftovers. That's also cloud automation. Close the door. Um, also more important is, is when, and that's, that's also a key thing, is when you impl implement something new, when you deliver something new to a customer, to an implementation or whatever, is to make sure that the end user experience is good. It's better. So, for example, don't try to over uh, commit, create a big monster in the beginning. It's better to start with a small installation for a selected number of customers, but where they can make it, that project inside that telco, a nice success, so they can spread the good news. If you introduce a, what I would call a, sometimes a Frankenstein in the, in the company, it's going to fail. It's getting to get those guys with you. Uh, also, what, what, uh, what, you, what you see is indeed the physical architecture must be simplified. Also, more, more in, uh, very important to see and to do is, like I said, fun. the nice thing about OpenStack and cloud is that you can start using commodity hardware. That you try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, one of the things is you can't fix everything with anything, but you have to make sure that you start with an, env an environment on commodity, which can be extended. Uh, like I said, the NFVs, the services, uh, are key things uh, in an OpenStack environment, because those are the add-ons, for example, firewall, firewall as a service, the groups, load balancing, L3, DNS, those are the things that you in the early days with applications you had to deliver and to, to create manually inside the organization, from now on you're going to deliver it by the cloud. So, the telecom has uh, chosen OpenStack. Why? Yeah, it was very easy. It's becoming the standard. Uh, I'll be honest, in the, in the early days uh, of, of OpenStack, last year for example, there were still choices. Is there anybody in this room who doubts that OpenStack is going to become the standard? 
gentleman gets up and leaves the room. Okay, nice. <laughs> but like I said, this this is what it is. You got the partners, you got the ecosystem. Uh, two, three weeks ago, I was in Barcelona at VMworld, and even there they were telling OpenStack, OpenStack, in OpenStack from VMworld, uh, VMware zone. Mm, okay, nice. We do it. So that's not a discussion anymore. So what has the telecom learned the last 15 months? 50% of the value in what they did in the test phase is indeed ca coming from renovation. Like I said, a full automation is key of rapid delivery and proven procedures. If you can improve the way how you deliver, how you develop, how you create new services, how you go forward, this is improvement. And that's the most thing. So OpenStack, it's not always about the money. I would say, and it's even what I've shown in, in surveys, it's about the flexibility, the renovation, where you also internally can rejuvenile your, your uh, IT departments. Uh, Twenty percent in the in the in the value in the network is the ver network fertilization, the flexibility and the scalability. I would even call that the most important difference between virtualization we have at the moment and cloud. It's the virtualization of the network, because what we see more and more is that even networks in data centers get connected with other data centers and things like that. So what we also see with global companies is make sure that how, how those networks are configured, also from a security st standpoint of view. The thing is, in OpenStack at the moment, the change in networking components, how it grows, what's possible, is changing in a very rapidly speed. So the nice thing is, indeed, is also what I would say is, remark here, you have to reconsider almost I wouldn't say not every six months, but every year that's coming, am I still using the right tools in OpenStack? The nice thing with OpenStack is also, for example, you can replace one part of OpenStack, for example, part of the networking of the storage, replace it by another component. We go from uh, software-defined storage to a to an, uh, Neta box or what, or we're going from an Arista switch to VXLAN. Those are components can be swapped, can be used without interrupting your OpenStack cloud. But also, when you implement OpenStack, like I said, dearly, think about it. The, challenge, the, cha the changes, the, the decisions you have made six months ago can be different than what you would do now. Thirty percent of the value is a switch to open source. Like I said, I'm, I'm a pure advocate for open source. I've been in the Linux uh, thing for 20 years. I hack my, my kernels personally. But for some people, it's still a change what open source is. Open source is you're going from a license model to a subscription. So you're paying for free software. I sell free software. And even my mother-in-law approves it. <laughs> yeah. What's free? Uh, even I tell ketchup is free, you know, you can make your own ketchup, you can grow some tomatoes, you get some, add some spices in, you cook it and you get ketchup. The nice thing with open source is the fact is, it's an open way to, to look at it, but for most of the people in the room, I suppose their business model is not making open source. It's using a product that delivers value to them and creates more value for them. However, because it's open source, Multiple companies, multiple parties work together. And one of the things that I learned when I was in military school was when you work together in a group, the, t the answers you create together in a group are better than when you do it alone. And that's the same with open source. If you see how many people at the moment are working together on OpenStack, are discussing it this, day, this week, what they should do, that's not something that one company can do alone. But in one company alone, you got one vision. And when mul multiple vision clash, you get the creation, the value of the open source. Also, what I see is, for some people, and I truly inside companies, developers inside companies like to contribute to open source. Not everybody, but full of the, most of them like it. Why? It gives them in what I would say some presence. They are alive. If you're just developing in a small room and you never, nobody knows what you're doing, that's. Yeah, it's nice. Also, the fact is, with, with, uh, with open sources, there is no no. 
if there's a feature you need in your company and it's not ready in OpenStack yet, there are two ways. You can develop it yourself or you can have it developed. But impossible is not yet there. Most of the time, like I said, Mirantis, we are a top three contributor. We can recommend our customers what to do if they have to develop it. Maybe sometimes they have to wait because it's on the roadmap, but at least we can have a discussion about it. But that's also the nice thing about open source. Uh, yeah. That was a conclusion about the telecom, what they did about OpenStack. It's, like I said, they, they joined it. And the most important thing is what I say here, and that's what I like about the learning here. After 12 months, we must ch challenge ourselves against the choice of the architects, because we now we have the ma matur maturity to review our choices. Do you see the, the circle? And if you adapt to that circle, but if you're really saying that, okay, we're going to learn what we have done, we're going to improve it, we're going to do it again, we're going to improve, and we're going to improve. So when I was talking about the insurance company who sent me an RFP of 40 pages for a five-year view, they had one idea, they want to implement it, and there was no thing that we're going to review it. And that's not the way how OpenStack works. Bless you. Also what they learned is major com commercial players are now implementing enterprise grade services. And that's like I said, you have to check out what your business model is, what you want to do yourself, what you want to have done for you, how we can go. Also, what you see is indeed in the open source community, if you're a party, if you're a company who, can com co uh, who, who wants to influence, who wants to be on the blueprints, who wants to design even OpenStack, you can become an actor in the community. So yes, you can deliver code, you can upgrade. It's, it's even more easy than s most of the people think. And we from Marantis, we are also happy just to help you to do this. Other things that we also see uh, around OpenStack is that you get complementary communities are emerging. They are relevant for the telecoms. What we see is, for example, we have now uh, Open NAV, so Network Function Virtualization. I got this gentleman in the room <laughs> from NAV, which creates standards about it. I got a slide later also. And now, I think what, what my friend and I, we learned the last 10 months, 10 months, is indeed, is when you're going to implement OpenStack, is that you clearly define on the beginning of this journey, because I call it a journey, it's not a project, it's a journey, what are the rules that you want to play on both parties. And I think, like I said, if you're the customer, you have to define the scope of the project, you have to define what's missing in your competencies, define the overall architecture of the project, prototype, learn, thing. And we as an integrator, we as the expert on OpenStack, has to advise the customer what to do or not. Like I said, if I got an RFP which is fixed, line number one, impossible. I can't challenge you to say what's good and what not. We can't go into discussion what we, we think with our experience is a valuable solution or not. So that's what I do. So to be honest, if we can't do line one, it's a success for failure. The thing is indeed also for, for in identify the missing components, we provide trainings, that's what you do, best practices like that. Also, what you do is, is some teams are thinking we're building on our own OpenStack, we're gonna support it. It's your billing, billing model, but at least that are the things what you do. So when you create, and even you can shift one component to another site or whatever, but when you start a journey on OpenStack with an integrator, define those roles in the beginning, not during the project. This is the start of everything. Like I said, last slide on uh, Open NAV. Like Open NAV, it's for telecoms. It drives closely with uh, Etsy NAV in uh, the industry specifications. That's more technical side, but at least what we see also on that side is that we have corporate uh, contributors to Open NAV, companies like Ericsson, uh, Huawei, Orange, all those guys, but also 
uh, the software uh, vendors like uh, Mirantis, and we're working on that one. Gentlemen, gentle ladies, this was my presentation. Any questions? Oh, thank you. Any questions, any ideas? Yeah? Please. Yes. Hi, I'm Yuri Kutana, and I've got a question. I was kind of like intrigued by your you know, intellectual challenge and the assertion that uh, a group does produce actually a richer or more intellectual result. And uh, I have been actually many times witness of the situation where a group was actually uh, causing poor result just because it was a group and uh, just it completely uh, killed any possible intellectual outcome which could have been there if uh, the work was a result of an in individual or you know, some high concentration of intellect. So I, I would actually doubt that as a general statement. Uh, uh, and, uh, but, but let me get me to the point. So uh, let me present that as, as, as an area which kind of uh, one may have different opinions on if I say it, uh, just uh, leave it uh, more or less open. But this is what puzzles me. I mean, I began to look at all of these OpenStack things like uh, three weeks ago and uh, everything else what's out there. And I found out that this great group effort is my opinion just trying to copy what Amazon is doing and is uh, by far still lagging. All the things we I hear here about, I found on Amazon and they were cool and great and working on the first site. Uh, on the first try without all of these uh, debates about some uh, VNF and uh, yada yada and what Etsy does. And, uh, and Etsy is, by the way, in my opinion, another example of group which has a great and long tradition of failures and ocean, uh, ocean boiling. So trying to implement this ocean boiling uh, activity doesn't uh, would almost sound to me like an example of uh, how this group uh, activity is going to lead to uh, to little result. So I, I don't mean to bash now open no, stack. No. It's just actually I'm attracted uh, by it uh, very much. That's why I'm here. But this is something which constantly keeps me puzzled. How come that actually it's still lagging behind, behind Amazon? So uh, you guys uh, are probably longer in the business and can enlighten me why, uh, why this gap is still here and uh, uh, what's going to happen to the gap in this great community, say, in okay. three years from Thank now. Okay, thank you. And sorry for, I, I, I didn't... I no, didn't no, 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 I'll, I'll, you can continue, but I'm going to give you an answer, otherwise I forget. My, my brain is a little bit fried at the moment <laughs> from, from, from the party yesterday. Uh, first of all, on the group thing, I, I, did, uh, I did military school, and one of the things I learned is indeed how to create good groups, because you can have groups with bore result and good groups with good result. Rule number one is, if you want to create a group which delivers better quality than individuals, create a hydro hydro heterogeneous group. That's the thing. Otherwise, we can discuss it by beer about group things. The other thing is about, yes, for some purposes, even maybe 80% of the purposes, Amazon is a good platform. And I'm not going to say that you have to go back from Amazon or whatever. The only thing I can say is, at the moment, OpenStack is ready for some production workloads. Not everything. It's now about choosing your battles. See what's possible, what's not. If, I'm gonna, if somebody says to me, if I'm Frank, I got a VMware farm of 2,000 servers, migrate me now because it's cost too, mon too much money. I'm going to say, next month it's going to cost you too much money because I ain't going to do it. But if somebody says, I've got developers who want to develop something or cr create new Cloud 2 applications, they ha don't have to do it at Amazon because that also costs money, then you have a business case to run it on OpenStack. And that's what I say is in beginning of the project, define your scopes, define what's possible, define what it will deliver. I mean, that's, of course, that's a good argument. Uh, run or uh, you cannot do run. Uh, you cannot run your own cloud with Amazon. That's you know, the point of control. Um, I take it. Sure. Okay, gentlemen, gentlemen, and gentle ladies. Thank you very much. <laughs>